So remember last week, uh, we've been talking about the second law of thermodynamics. And we have uh, two major statements in this law, um, just to give you a, a reminder. Um, Okay, so remember last week, two major, two major statements in second law of thermodynamics. We said um, the first one uh, related to heat engine. So heat engine, which is like any engine that um, produces um, work. So for heat engine, we said, um, in, in order to, to have um, an actual heat engine that can produce uh, work, W, what we need actually, we need heat source. Okay, so this is heat source providing heat to the device and then um, it will generate W, of course. And then after generating the W, we need to reject what uh, the remaining heat to the, um, to the heat sink. And the heat sink, we said any, um, any space that has um, big size that doesn't affect with, with the change in temperature. So the heat sink, such as the environment, the surrounding air, um, a lake, uh, an ocean, a river, all these are, these are represent, re represent a heat sink. Okay, so this is um, the uh, first requirement for heat engine. So this is second law, uh, based on second law. And we said that the efficiency we can say this is QH because this is the high, high uh, um, temperature heat, and this is we call it QL, the low, low temperature uh, source. Okay, so QH and QL, and to find the efficiency of this, we said we need to say the output, which is W divided by the input heat, which is here, in this case, QH. So this is one, one um, statement of second law of thermodynamics. The other one relates to <clears throat> the heat pump. Remember heat pump? We said heat pump when we want to um, move heat from one side to other side, such as the air conditioning system. So we have heat pump or um, refrigerator cycle. Refrigerator system, such as the air conditioning or the refrigerator at home or any freezer. Or, so this is um, another um, example. So heat pump and refrigerator system, um, they work the same thing, but in opposite way. Our, our aim, our target from any device that um, works or following these two systems, heat pump or refrigeration system is, the idea here is to, um, to move heat from low temperature, TL let's say here, to other side of the system, which is the surroundings, we call it um, TH, high temperature. Okay, and in order in order to do this, 
we cannot device, design a device without adding another um, input, which is the work. We always need work input in order to move heat from Q, the QL here, move it to the other side as QH. Okay. And we said um, the efficiency of this kind of devices is not similar to this one anymore because our output here different. Our output is not work. Our output here, we want to move, let's say in, in, um, in the refrigerator, we want to remove QL. So we said, um, we're gonna have different definition here. We call it coefficient of performance and we give it the simple COP. So we said COP, here um, for refrigerator R is, is equal to the output. Here our output is QL because we are moving QL, the heat from the refrigerator <coughs> to the outside. So we said our output here is QL divided by the input. What's the input here? Can someone remember? What's the input here? <clears throat> sir, QL is the input, right? QL is Q the output. Welcome, sir. It's, it's just uh, like entering into the system. Yeah, and it, something entering the system, which is the work, right? Yeah. W, because this is the, um, the work supplied by the electricity. When we want to run the motor, the compressor of the refrigerator, requires electricity, which is W here. Okay, so we put W as input. And we said <coughs> COP will be always higher than one, while uh, efficiency is always less than one. Okay. <clears throat> and this is for refrigerator. If we are working with air conditioning system, such as the, um, the air conditioning, um, the split unit or window type or any other type of air conditioning, he, the output different now. What's the output in, in the air conditioning system? Do you know? Do you remember? COP, we call it heat pump. QH? Yes, perfect. So the first one is for the uh, heat engine, right? Sorry, this one, COPR is refrigerator. Oh, for refrigerator. refrigerator. <clears throat> okay, and COPHP is for, for air conditioning system. So COPHP, our output here, we want to get heat, which is QH. We want to get heat, right? To, this, to, the, to the space. So QH is our output. So we put QH. divided by input, the input will be the same, which is the electricity, so W, all right? <clears throat> so these are the, um, the major statements in second law of thermodynamics. So focus on these um, three uh, type of efficiencies. The normal efficiency of the engine, which is always less than one, uh, and the uh, coefficient of performance for Refrigerator or uh, high uh, for, for uh, heat pump, always we said COP will be, should be always greater than one. So Sorry. if you, yes. <clears throat> yes. A uh, little question. Yes. For refrigerator and uh, air conditioner doing almost the same thing. Uh, the refrigerator is keeping cool inside and the air conditioner as well. But why that? Yeah, because, because in the refrigerator, <clears throat> remember, uh, did you, I mean, uh, uh, did, can I delete this or you want, you want this um, page? You, already, oh, you can yeah. delete it, it's fine. We already read it down. Yeah, <laughs> so. Um, now in, in the, we said, remember refrigerator, this is the refrigerator. We are taking heat from here, we said, there is a kind of um, loop here, um, a pipe 
going inside the refrigerator and we are taking whatever heat we have here in the compartment or inside the refrigerator, we are taking this heat to this, um, uh, to this refrigerant loop, okay? And the loop then what's happened here, we have refrigerant coming inside and then, then refrigerant leaving. And with, with this, the first one here, we are taking Q, but Q here is take, we are taking Q at low temperature, TL, because the, the refrigerator temperature is lower than the ambient temperature, TH, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So we call Q at the lower temperature, we call it QL. So this is QL. While uh, the heat rejected to the room here is QH, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So in, 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 the, in the refrigerator, our target is to get rid of this QL. While in the air conditioning system, our target to get this heat. So if, if I put this refrigerator, for example, the same, same system, I will put it in this way. This is the system I have, okay? And then this is the, this is QL. And this is QH. So if I put this QH inside the room, <clears throat> this is a room, then I'm getting heat <clears throat> inside the room. Correct. In in winter time, in winter time, I need heat, so I take QH. I put it as a, my my target, my required output. Yeah. While yeah. while um, in the refrigerator, it's the other way around. Okay. Okay. No, honestly. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So we go back to. Um, to the <coughs> class, uh, to the um, slides. And then um, this is like a quick summary of what we did last week, but uh, that's what I wanted you to, to focus on, the summary of the last week or the second law of thermodynamics. Please try to um, uh, understand the three equations, the three efficiency equations, right? Now, um, the most other important thing is in, in um, we said that uh, in, two, uh, in second law of thermodynamics, we are focusing on the quality of energy, correct? And the quality, <coughs> we said that um, energy has quality as well as quantity, not only quantity, I have also quality. So high, higher temperature um, is the higher quality of energy. If I have, let's say, a tank of high temperature, I have high quality energy. While if I have a tank with lower temperature, this is like lower temperature um, or lower quality energy. And work, we can say, because we said work is um, um, one type of energy and the work is the highest quality of energy. The reason why, because we can always um, convert work to heat. 100%. For example, if I have um, a tank, um, I didn't share with you the screen, sorry. Right, so. <clears throat> Okay, so we, we, um, we said the work is more valuable form of energy because um, we can uh, convert the work um, into heat, 100% of the work can convert to heat. So for example, if I have a tank, a tank um, at, um, for example, hot water tank like this, and I have 
um, heat coming from heat resistance, sorry, electric resistance. So we have electric resistance. This re electric resistance represents W because it's coming from electricity. So WE, all right? And this, um, this resistance, actually, I can convert the work from this to heat 100%. I, I will not lose anything. If I put a cable, uh, put a resistance inside the tank, water tank, then I can convert W to Q without any loss. While I can't do, I can't do the, uh, the inverse process. I can't do, I can't take this heat Q and a heat of the res resistance to generate W in the same amount. This is uh, it's gonna, it's not possible. All right, so that's why we, we, we say that work is uh, the highest quality, uh, or highest, highest, yeah, highest type of, or the highest quality energy, right? So, um, and uh, when heat is transferred from high temperature to low temperature, we always, we are degrading, degrading the energy because it's coming from high to low. And this is a degradation of the energy um, due to loss. So now we come to the major, um, major thing in this um, talk. What's, what type, why, why we are having this loss in inequality, in energy quality? So the reason why is um, this is because of what we call um, we are um, there, the change in entropy. And entropy, the quantitative measure of disorder or randomness in the system. So the higher temperature, we have higher disorder or randomness in the system. The lower temperature, we will have less disorder in the system. Okay, so when we change from high to low, actually we are changing the, the property, the entropy property. Okay, so I think you have noticed in the steam tables, there is the last column, the last three columns, we have what we call S, the simple S, or they put at the top of the column, they call it entropy, next to the uh, enthalpy. Uh, this is what, what we are talking about, actually. So the entropy is another property that you need um, when you are doing analysis based on second law of thermodynamics, okay? And as I said, uh, entropy also is a measure of energy uh, in the system that cannot be used to do work. So this is kind of the change in entropy represents um, the amount of energy we lost that we cannot do it or can, we cannot convert it to work. We said that work is the highest uh, level of uh, or the highest quality uh, of energy. Okay. And um, and in, and in re a reversible process, remember we talk about reversible and irreversible pro process, and we said most of the actual processes uh, 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 in, in the systems are reversible, uh, irreversible process that we cannot, we cannot um, um, return the, uh, the condition to its initial state because of um, the loss in entropy. So an irreversible process degrades the performance of a thermodynamic system. So we, if we have irreversible process, means that we have less efficiency in the system uh, of, or, or less, less efficiency of the system. So um, now how, how, to, um, how to find entropy, as we said, we are different types of um, methods, but the, the, the major one is that you're gonna use is the, the steam tables or property tables. So in property tables, if you know the pressure and temperature, you can always get the value of entropy. Same as let's say we, we do when you do it, when you want to find enthalpy or you want to find internal energy, you need high, uh, temperature and pressure and you go to this 
tables and under, let's say, a certain pressure and temperature, you can find out what's the value of enthalpy or what the value of entropy. But as a definition, um, change of enthalpy, as you can see here in this equation, is basically um, the change in heat divided by the temperature, the surrounding temperature. I don't want to go into, into details um, of um, this, but I just wanna, want you to understand or to know that the change of um, the entropy or the entropy change of a system during a process is simply uh, the difference between um, initial and final state of the process. So if I know um, the entropy at uh, the inlet of or uh, at the beginning of the process, and I know the entropy at the end of the process, then delta S is simply the difference between um, the final and initial, okay? So um, let me, let me, again, because entropy um, is um, not an initial property, uh, and um, it's derived from other properties, as you can see in the um, in the um, units. Entropy units are kilojoule per kilogram per kelvin. So we have energy as a kilojoule, we have mass as kilogram, and we have temperature as k. So entropy is extensive property. All right, um, and in tables. We always have this unit, kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. So remember, this is um, the unit of entropy. Now, um, on the diagram, if I want to represent uh, entropy on the diagram, it's quite similar to the diagram we, we plot before. Before, remember, we say you used to have T, the y axis as temperature, and the x axis as. Uh, always specific volume. Now we're going to use entropy in the x axis. Um, and same as before, the saturation line, the red line here, this line, we call it saturation line. Uh, any um, face to the left of the line is liquid. Any face at the right side of the line is superheated vapor and anything in between inside it's two phase or mixture and each one requires um, different uh, type of calculation to find out the entropy so for example in liquid phase we need pressure and temperature as you can see here if i know the pressure one temperature one i go to tables uh, saturation tables either for pressure or temperature and find SF. SF is, represents the entropy of liquid, okay? Same thing to the, uh, to the right side of this. Um, the uh, superheated vapor, I can find entropy at this part if I know the pressure P3 and T3. So I can find S3. The only difference here, of course, we, when you want to find S3, you need to go to the superheated tables. You know that now we're quite familiar with this. So you go to superheated tables, not saturated tables and find S3 if you know the pressure and temperature, okay? Now the, the last thing, the last, the last um, method, when you have um, two phase or saturated region or if you have mixture, so in mixture, you always, we always refer to this equation. Remember this equation. Um, we have this equation for entropy, for enthalpy, and for internal energy. And for each case, it's quite similar. The only thing you need to do is change um, the simple from S to H, or let's say from H to U. Uh, depends on what you want to find, the property that you find. So, if it's enthalpy, then you change S, you put H. If you have internal energy, you put, instead of S, you put U and so on. 
All right. Uh, any questions so far? <clears throat> okay. So that's actually um, what I wanted to explain here about entropy and the, this property is quite important. Okay. Now, um, let me let me take take you to um, an example. Give an example because um, I believe we can clarify everything by an example. Um, before we take the example, just to show you that we when we, we plot the TS diagram here, let's say between two points from point one to point two, I have expansion. For example, this this process expansion process. Then the area under the curve represents the heat. Okay, so um, because um, we said that the T multiplied by dS actually is dQ, change in heat. So temperature multiplied by change in entropy represents change in heat because we are degrading, degrading the, the quality of energy. So from high temperature to low temperature, this is like change in heat. And if we would divide, if we divide the change in heat in by temperature, we get change in entropy. So same thing, if I take this, uh, take the area under the curve, this will give me the change in heat. Okay, so that's just to give you an idea about how to find the, um, change in heat if we have the TS diagram. Okay, now um, the most important thing here of um, from all what like from all the thing that we talk about is um, because the entropy is uh, a measure of disorder in the system and we said that ideal system is reversible, has pre reversible process. So in reversible process, um, the change in entropy is zero. So as you can see here, in the change in entropy, delta S equals zero. This is what we call isentropic process. So isentropic process is a process during which entropy remains constant. So um, if, you, like, if you have a look to this um, diagram, TS diagram, I have this turbine, this is turbine, okay? For example, the steam turbine. Okay, so this steam turbine um, has two type of expansion. If we take the ideal expansion um, 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 from point one, to point two, the exit. So from inlet to exit, as you can see in the diagram. So from inlet to exit, the first, the first um, process when we have delta S zero, as you can see, if I extend this down to this, delta S doesn't change between one and two. So I, ca I, I call this process isentropic process. And the second option is between one and two, as you can see on the drawing here, two is has different S from one. So this is S1, this is S2. When we have difference in entropy, it means that we have irreversible process. And um, there is a, a definition here, which is used widely um, in, um, in different devices, actually. It's, it's a measure of the quality of the device. They call it isentropic efficiency. Remember before we said we have efficiency and efficiency, we always, we're talking about output divided by input, correct? Now, this is a general, definition of efficiency, but this is, doesn't tell us how good is our device. Unless 
we do this type of efficiency, which we call it isotropic efficiency. And so isotropic efficiency actually comparing between two process, the process, the ideal process, which is the reversible process, if we have in the system and the actual process, which we have in the system. So the actual process is at the top. So if you, you can see here, H1 minus H2 is the actual process. And H1 minus H2 iso is the ideal process. So I divide the actual by the ideal. Okay, so just remember this, dividing the actual process Dividing by the divided by the ideal process. Okay, so if I can do this, I will find an efficiency, and this efficiency actually uh, showing us how how good is our system is. Okay, is it clear? Any question? Right. Is the age enthalpy? Sorry. What is the age? Yeah, H is enthalpy, yes, correct. Okay. So enthalpy at the initial or at the, at the inlet minus enthalpy at the exit two divided by the enthalpy at the inlet, same, but minus now enthalpy at exit of isentropic process or as um, at a reversible process, okay? So I'll put it this way again, so make it clear. If I have two, two pressure lines like this. So pressure one, pressure two. And I have an expansion from one, point one, two expansions, one of them going straight like this. And because it's straight, S one here, will equal to S2 iso. Okay, and the other expansion is coming like this. It's not straight, it's not vertical, because this is the actual process. This is two, this is the actual two, we call it just two. And this will give us S2 here only. It's not ISO, All right? And when I want to find the, the enthalpy, I can say, if I put here H, the Y axis is H. So enthalpy of one, we call it H1. And enthalpy of ISO, we call it H2 ISO. And the end, the other enthalpy here, we call it the actual enthalpy exit at exit. We call it H2. All right. So now when do with efficiency, I take these two together on the numerator and take these two together at the denominator. Okay, so H1 minus H2. Is the first one H1 minus H2. Divided on the bigger bigger difference. H1 minus H iso. H2 iso. Okay. I'm not sure like if this is clear or not for you. Did I make it clear or not? Please don't feel shy. Just let me know if it's not clear. Can you repeat it again, please? Okay, I will, I will clear it from the beginning. Okay, so I have two pressure lines. I have TS diagram. Let me do uh, take a... Um, um,
All right, so I have, um, I'll make it a big drawing so you understand this. So this is the, I'll call this the y axis, I'll call it H, not T, just to make it simple. So this is H, not T, and this is S, entropy. And I have two pressure lines here. So this is um, P1, and this is P2. All right, and I'm, I'm expanding this. This is the uh, entering the turbine, call it number one. The process, the ideal process is the isentropic process or um, rever reversible process. It's expanding from one to two. And I call this two iso because it's isentropic, it's reversible. Okay, and if you expand this down to the to the x axis, this gives me s two equals to s one, right? Because there, there is no difference. X two iso. Is it correct? Clear? Yep. There is no change in, in entropy because both of them are on the same line. Now, if the actual process, this is the actual process coming like this. So this is two now. This is the actual two. And if I expand two down, I have different value. So here, S2. And S2 not equal to S1. Yeah. Correct? Yep. And this will give me different values for H. So for, for one, this is the H1, the same H, this is H1. Now for two, this is actual enthalpy at the exit. This is H2. And the ideal enthalpy at the exit is this one. I call it H2 iso. Yeah. Now, if I take the difference between these two first, divided by these two second, I will get the isentropic efficiency. So in that case, H2 minus H1 divided by H2 iso minus H1? Yes, correct. So then iso efficiency, Can you tell me again, please? So we will work together. Uh, it's H2 minus H1. No, you start with the highest enthalpy. H1 is okay. highest. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, H1 minus H2. Yeah, H1 minus H2. Uh, this oh, is well, the input okay. divided by the, act, the, H, the, the ideal one, which is H1. H1 minus H2 iso. Yes, that's it. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Clear now? Is it clear for everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So Mervin, this is called isentropic, right? Yeah, isentropic. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Clear for everyone? William, Tarek, Christopher. All good. Good? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's take, let's take an example. We took too much luck. Like, like, now it's uh, already, what's the time now? Wow, well, yeah. Let's finish this and go to the um, new topic. So this is the, like, let's take, take an example because that's important for next week quiz. And then we'll um, uh, go to heat transfer. Okay, so. All right, so let's go back to, to the slides. So, so we are done with the thermodynamics, right? Yes, we're still done thermodynamics, yeah. Um, we had to go back to, um, to share screen, sorry, let's share the screen view. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's take an example. It's really quite simple example, but 
reflecting the idea of um, um, the isentropic efficiency. So this is the example that we have. Uh, it's also in the book and you can find it also in the in views, solved examples in solved, solved examples section in views. As I said before, um, I put for you all the examples of the book for each chapter. So you can go there and um, revise or, uh, or um, solve this example by yourself. It's already solved, but you, you can practice this. So now this is the steam turbine again, and um, steam enters an adiabatic turbine. This is like you know, a new term probably for you, adiabatic. When, we, when you hear adiabatic, it means that isolated, let's just put it in simple form, simple definition. Adiabatic means isolated. And if it's isolated, that means that there is no Q in and Q out, right? So when you have, whenever you have adiabatic, means that there is no exchange of heat between um, in or out. There is no Q. Okay, so this is um, not available because it's adiabatic. adiabatic. And um, you already given the pressure and temperature at the inlet, and you are also given the pressure at the exit. Um, determine the work output of the turbine uh, per unit mass of steam. If the process is reversible, can you can you like notice this? When we say the process is reversible, if you look at the TS diagram, what do you see? Is the um, the blue line vertical or inclined? Vertical. 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 And if it's vertical, definitely there is no delta S. The S, I mean, uh, initial S and final S are the same because it's vertical falling on the X axis at the same value. So point one and point two state to have, both of them have the same S. So this will help us to find out the property of the exit. Because as you can see at the exit only we have pressure, we don't have anything else. While at the input, we have pressure and temperature. So we can easily go to the um, steam tables and find enthalpy from there. By, while at the exit, we have only pressure. We need another property to enter the tables. So the, table, the, the property here that we're gonna get is entropy. If you know the entropy S1 here from tables, then this will be equal to S2. And then if I have S2, I can, with the pressure here, I can go to the tables and also find enthalpy two. Okay, so this is the, um, the benefit of having, or, or of benefit of having a yeah, reversible process in the example that so it's easily, we can find the exit if we know the inlet. If I know the inlet's entropy, I can take this entropy as exit entropy, and then with the other property at the exit, I can find um, enthalpy at the exit, right? So uh, again here, um, we can apply, of course, the, um, uh, the energy balance, and we know that there is no, let's say, the effect of uh, heat. There is no heat in and heat out. As we said, it's adiabatic. So we're gonna cancel heat. We're gonna cancel um, the uh, effect of um, effect of potential energy, effect of change in kinetic energy because we don't have any any values here. So we're gonna exclude these. Only the only part is work and enthalpy. So as you can see here, the only um, the only term that we're gonna keep in our energy equation is the work and enthalpy. So work actually is equal to the mass flow rate multiplied by change in enthalpy, H1 minus H2. Now our um, job here is to find out the value of enthalpy at the inlet and enthalpy at the exit. And we said that enthalpy at the inlet is quite simple. We can easily find it from tables because we have pressure and temperature. And we know that this is um, steam uh, or superheated steam, 
Therefore, it's easy. You can go to the superheated tables and find out H1. The next is, as you can see here, <coughs> we can find <coughs> H1 and also we can find the entropy, right? So please, when you go home, try to find the same values from tables just to practice yourself uh, how to find the entropy, just to prepare yourself for next week. Okay, um, so this is the one, first one. The second one, we said uh, uh, state two, which is that exit, we have only pressure, but because it's, uh, we know that the process is reversible, mean, means that um, there is no change in entropy. Therefore, we can say S2 is equal to S1, as we mentioned before. And if I take S1 with the, inf with the uh, sorry, S1 with the pressure together, I can find the enthalpy from tables. Again, I need you to go to tables because it's quite important. Uh, uh, when you go to the tables, um, you have pressure, but you need to um, train yourself how to find the enthalpy from entropy. So now, rather than looking at the temperature in the tables, you have to look at the entropy. Okay, so let me let me just uh, probably if I if there's time, not sure if we have time. Yeah, maybe you have five minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll show you how to find um, enthalpy from pressure and entropy from tables. But let me finish this. So this is um, once you find enthalpy two. Now you just simply say the work is the delta delta H. Okay, so we're gonna have the work per unit mass because we don't have the mass flow rate here. So we just get um, delta H uh, considering that there is only per kilogram of steam. So H2 minus or H1 minus H2 is um, the work out of the turbine per kilogram. <clears throat> Do you have any question? <clears throat> so we call this um, actually two here, in this case is two ISO, <clears throat> right? So H2 here, actually H2 ISO, because um, it's falling at the same line of reversible process. <clears throat> Okay, right. Um, now I just give you quickly how to find, show you how to find the, um, the, the value of in, enthalpy from tables when you know pressure and entropy. So for example, here, um, let me go if you can reach the tables. Yeah. Yeah, as you can see here, <clears throat> this is um, superheated steam, superheated water, okay? And in, in this table here, <clears throat> I have pressure for these um, small tables. So now in our case, for example, what was the pressure, do you remember? 1.4 or something. Yeah. Good memory. Uh, yes, this is uh, five, no, five megapascal. Five and yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, correct, you are correct. 1.4 at the exit. So at uh, 1.4 at the exit megapascal. So let, let's go back to the table. Just remember this value, 1.4, and the entropy here, S1 is 6.8. Okay, so we have um, the exit 1.4 and entropy is, um, Six point for the exit. Sorry, for the exit. Yeah. For the, no, for the, sir, for the exit, uh, it's uh, two nine six six. 
Yeah, yeah, but no, we are we are now trying to oh, okay. find the exit, exit because exit we don't have information. So we have one point four and six point eight. So now go back to to our table. Um, just remember now. So one point one point four megapascal. So I just go down in the table until I reach one point four. This is one point four. Can you see? Yeah. So this is 1.4 table pressure. Mm -hmm. Now the in, the entropy. Can you see entropy? The last column. Mm -hmm. If I go down in the entropy column, I reach to 6.8. So under this yes. pressure, uh, I don't have exactly six, six point, between 6.7 and 6.9. Oh, the third, the third, and the fourth row. Yeah. So in between, but we, you can do what we call interpolation. To find out, so for, for six point seven, what is the enthalpy? Uh, the six point seven four uh, yeah. two nine six two seven. Yeah, or and nine. for six point nine is thirty. Yeah, three thousand. Sorry, three thousand forty. So we have enthalpy in between. So if you, if you uh, find uh, for six point eight, because we said for this. If I want to find the um, enthalpy between these two, uh, I have 6.8 entropy. So if I have 6.8, I can find what's the enthalpy in between. In, in the exam, I will not, um, most likely I will not give you this kind of process because interpolation requires some time. But just to let you know that if you have exact number, for example, if you have 6.7, Entropy, it's straightforward. 6.7, then it means H is 2927. Okay. Or if it's if it's um if it's um 6.9, if the uh, entropy is 6.9, then enthalpy is 3040. Okay. Clear? Everyone. So now if you know yeah. entropy. And you know the pressure, you can easily go to the tables. You do the same thing here. You choose the, the pressure first, and then under the entropy column, you follow the column and see where is your entropy value. This is my entropy value. Then for this entropy, what is the edge? I find this is the edge. This is my edge. Okay. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Hold on. Good, thank you. Let's go then to our second part of the lecture. Okay. All right, so by this we finish the um, thermodynamics part of um, this unit. So we're going to start today the heat transfer part. And um, in heat transfer, we will um, also, we don't have enough time actually, it's only um, six weeks time. So we will give you the major, major topics in this, um, in this part, probably I mentioned before that in some <coughs> um, courses, they focus, they give only heat transfer, course for heat transfer only, because it's, it's, it has so many, so many um, uh, topics and subtopics, uh, and also thermodynamics, they give, a, give, give thermodynamics um, all, uh, as one course one course for thermodynamics and one course for heat transfer. But in this case, we have combined um, course. So we have part of it's thermodynamics, the other part is heat transfer. So we'll start today with the heat transfer. Um, <clears throat> just to um, uh, give you an idea about the the coming topics, you will find probably you have so many formulas and so many um, equations 
but um, don't get scared um, because as I said before, first of all, in, in the exam, you will have the formula sheet and uh, or you will have open book exam and in the open book, you'll be able to um, get your formula or equation from the notes or from the book. Uh, but the most important thing, because it's limited time, it's only two hours exam in the final exam. If you don't know how to use these equations, you will be in trouble because the time um, the frame is uh, an issue. And if you don't know which one is the right equation for your uh, example or for your, for your question, then you're gonna spend longer time searching which one is applicable uh, for my case. So please try to understand these equations. Don't, don't memorize them, but understand them and make sure that you know where to apply each uh, principle or each um, formula, okay? So in, in thermodynamics, we're gonna talk about three major types of heat transfer here. Sorry, heat transfer. We're gonna talk about three major types of heat transfer. Um, heat transfer by conduction, heat transfer by convection, and heat transfer by radiation. We'll talk about each one of these individually in the coming lectures, uh, but today we'll give you a summary um, or kind of introduction um, to these three types of heat transfer. So heat transfer, we mentioned before, uh, the form of energy that can be transferred from one system to another as a result of uh, temperature difference. If you don't have temperature difference, there will be no heat transfer. So I think you know this from previous um, uh, from previous lectures, or we talked about this at the beginning of our um, session. So the basic basic requirement for heat transfer, as we said, is the presence of temperature difference. Application of uh, heat transfer is in every maybe every single um, device in our life. We have heat transfer in different forms, of course, but. If you uh, look deeply in any device, you will find there is heat transfer. Just give an example, the laptop or the PC that you are working on now. Can you some, can someone tell me um, where we can find heat transfer in your laptop or your device? I know it's electronic device, but there is part of it relates to heat transfer. Exhaust fan? Yeah, perfect. Cooling fan. Correct, cooling fan. Cooling fan in the laptop. I think you can hear it sometimes when it operates. This fan is always cooling, cooling the PC, okay? Um, and um, cooling the circuit, internal circuit, or the cooling the board or the IC of the board. So if you don't have this cooling fan, there will be damage in the board and you will not be able to run, run the uh, computer. So. This is like just an example uh, where about heat transfer. So we'll show you like some of the um, application, industrial ap application, but uh, just to let you know that um, the, um, the unit of uh, heat transfer depends on um, what we are measuring. So uh, if you are measuring energy per, Per unit of time, then it will be kilojoule per second. Okay, so this is um, one 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 part of or one type of units that we we may use in kilojoule per second. Um, but engineering uh, engineering heat transfer relates to um, a rating problem and sizing problem. So if you want to say the rate of heat can be transferred or the size of the system we need to transfer to, to solve or to find out, um, for example, the size of the system, such, such as let's say um, the size of the fan in the computer or the size of the cooling system in, the, in your um, uh, house. Okay, so now heat transfer, as we said, is, part, is kind of energy uh, and uh, it can, the, the energy can be transferred um, 
by two forms, either by heat, which we give it a simple Q, or energy can be transferred by W. So from the system as work or as power. Um, the, the amount of heat transfer during a process, we give it, as we said, a, um, a simple Q. And if it's only, we talk about heat, then the unit here is kilojoule. So just remember this, if it's heat, only heat, it's a joule or kilojoule. But um, if we have heat per unit of time, then we have kilojoule per second. And we give it a symbol Q dot, as you can see here, Q dot is kilojoule per second or, or what? So it's joule per second or kilojoule per second, or we call it, call it kilowatt. This is kilowatt, yeah? So any, any, any type of this, any, I mean, we call it uh, amount of heat transfer per unit time. Okay, and um, the rate of heat transfer per, per unit area. Now we have heat, heat transfer per unit of time, we call it heat rate, kilojoule per second. And if the heat transfer per unit area, we call it heat flux. And heat flux given the, um, the unit watt per square meter. So, so these are different definition of heat transfer in terms of time or in terms of uh, area, um, we did have different, different units for each one of these. Okay, <clears throat> now um, this is like different modes of heat. We said that we have heat transfer by convection and conduction and radiation. And as you can see here, um, if I'm just like cooling a water um, by, by a, a source, heat source like a fire here I'm burning burning uh, some for example uh, kind of uh, coal or wood underneath so first of all heat can transfer by radiation so this is the radiation effect and the radiation can reach to the to the pan here and the surface of this uh, pan then can be can get heat can be, become or be, become hot up to temperature, for example, T uh, equal to, let's say, 100. At, at 100, the water start to boil. So the first, first type of heat was by radiation. The second type through the uh, metal of the pan um, or um, the vessel, um, through the metal will be by conduction. And then from the surface or from the metal to the water, the heat will be by convection. Okay, so these are three types of heat transfer in one process or in one system. <clears throat> right. Um, these are like some application of um, heat transfer uh, in real life. For example, if you can see here to the left side of this for this room, we can heat this room by a simple heater. You can see here, this heater um, can, um, if there is, let's say, air, air flow, the air get heated. And when we get heated, the density of the air become lower. And if the density of the layer become, become lower, then the air will rise up. And then the cold air will go down and the circulation will um, keep going inside the room until we reach a certain temperature or to the temperature that we need, to the limit of temperature we need. Um, another type, this is by convection, by the way, this is the heat transfer by convection because we are basically um, using air, circulating the air inside the room to heat the room. So this is by convection, okay? Um, the other type is heat transfer by having um, um, a loop of um, pipes inside underneath the floor of the room, as you can see here. So some, some houses, 
they put kind of a net of uh, pipes under under the floor and these pipes in the concrete slab for example it, it will heat the concrete slab and then it will heat the surface of the floor of the room and then from this um, we can take uh, we can transfer heat to uh, inside the room. So the first part is by conduction in the concrete slab, and then from the floor surface to the room by convection. So we have two types of heating here, um, or it can be by radiation. It depends on um, uh, if there is no circulation of air, then it will be by radiation. If there's circulation, most likely it will be by convection. Okay, so different different types of heat transfer. Um, this is this is just to give you an example about the concrete slab and the uh, loop of um, pipes underneath. It's, I think here it's clear. This is the pipe here, and you can see the surface of the floor. So there is like you know kind of tiles under the tile. There is concrete, and in between there is uh, pipes running inside the concrete. These pipes has hot water, for example, and the hot water will um, heat the, the concrete or the floor of the room, and then um, uh, from the floor to the room space, we get heated by a convection or by radiation, okay? And <clears throat> this is another type of heat transfer or application of heat transfer. If you have a, a furnace and you want to, you can burn fuel inside the furnace, and then you allow um, air coming from outside to go inside the furnace. Um, and then this air will be heated by, um, by the combustion inside, by the heat of combustion inside the furnace. Right. Another type here, you can heat the house by solar radiation. So you get heat from the sun you heat these panels at the roof, and then um, there are water running inside these panels, and you can take the water inside the room. You can heat um, the same thing by same technology, underground heating. So you can put a um, <clears throat> loop of pipes underneath, and you can heat the water coming from, hot water coming from the panels, from the solar panels, you can heat the floor or you can heat the space inside the house. Okay. And so on. So this is like, um, just give you a brief, brief example where we can apply heat transfer. Right. So let's, let's take the first, first, um, um, first type of heat transfer, which is by conduction. Heat transfer by conduction. And heat transfer by conduction um, we said heat transfer by conduction most likely takes place through solids, okay? So the rate of heat conduction through a, a plane layer is proportional to, um, to the temperature difference. We said the temperature difference is, is a, a major factor in heat transfer. If you don't have temperature, temperature difference, there is no heat transfer. So the first thing is um, heat transfer by conduction proportional to the temperature difference between um, two sides of the um, any surface. So we have temperature one here, for example, temperature two at this side. So we have side, let's say outside of the room and inside the room here. So these two temperatures creates flow of heat through the wall. <clears throat> now, this is the first thing. So this first factor affecting the conduction, heat transpire conduction is um, the temperature difference. So heat transfer by conduction proportional to temperature difference across the, um, the wall, but inversely proportional to the um, thickness of the wall. So you see here, delta X is the thickness of the wall. The smaller thickness, the more heat transfer we have. The bigger, bigger different, big, bigger thickness of the wall, the less heat transfer we have, okay? So from this, we can write um, an equation for heat transfer by conduction. We call it Fourier's law, Fourier's law of heat transfer. 
So Ferrier's law of heat transfer states that Q dot, which is heat transfer rate, is equal to <clears throat> K, which is thermal conductivity of the surface, multiplied by the area of heat transfer, which is the normal area, the area perpendicular to the heat transfer. This is the area of the wall. So if I have the L, for example, if I have W here, width, and I have length or height of the wall, H. So H multiplied by W, the width, I can get the area. It's an area of um, rectangle or square, whatever. <clears throat> okay, so the heat transfer Q dot is equal to K multiplied by A, the area, multiplied by difference in temperature between in and out, divided by the thickness of the wall, delta X. All right? Clear for everyone? Yep. Any question? Okay, now we call, as we said, K is maybe a new, new uh, term that you're gonna deal with now, which is we call thermal conductivity. And thermal conductivity actually depends on the type of the material that we're using. So for example, thermal conductivity of brick different from thermal conductivity of timber different from thermal conductivity of foam or uh, plaster or uh, um, um, styrofoam, uh, di different, each, each material has different K. So if you know what type of material we have, we can go to tables, find the value of K for this material, and then we enter K in the equation to find out the heat transfer rate, okay? And there are um, many applications here. But in this table, can you see this table here to the right side? This table gives you an example of um, thermal conductivities of different types of material. So for example, if you, want, if you don't want heat transfer from the system, if I don't want heat transfer from the system, I want to isolate the system from the surrounding. Um, which, which material I should use, for example, Christopher? Uh, anything from the bottom of the table. Perfect, thank you. So anything from the bottom of the table, for example, foam here, rigid foam, or um, soft rubber, if I did less like need less heat transfer. This has low K. And is remember, if I put the equation here, Q dot, Equation is say Ka, so K is um, multiplier in the equation, delta T divided by delta X. Okay, and um, because K is multiplied by the temperature, so the smaller K I have, the lower Q. So I should search, if I want lower Q, I need, need to search um, material at the lower uh, side of or the, the bottom of the table. So choose the right material for my system and substitute it in the equation and find out how much Q I will lose from the system. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, maybe if we go to... Um, Yeah, and this this like just this figure or this slide shows um, the um, the mechanism of thermal conduction. Uh, in in de depends of course on on the type or the face of the substance. So in the gas gas phase, um, we have randomness in in molecular or we call it molecular collisions and molecular diffusion. Uh, and um, the uh, distribution of these molecules are not uniform in the system. In liquid, we have 
uh, more uniform distribution, as you can see in the second one. <clears throat> so, but, but in, in the solid, in the solid, you can see that the switching is quite uniform. And um, um, this, this, this distribution will affect heat transfer by conduction. So the, the conduction, heat transfer by conduction will be from one uh, molecule to other one. So we have vibration or in each, in each atom or each molecule, and this vibration will um, be transmitted to from one uh, side of the uh, wall or uh, surface to other side due to this um, uh, vibration. <clears throat> so let's let's take um, an example. I will I will we'll, we will solve this example by Kahoot. I know it's uh, now. Yeah, we still have time, half an hour or more than half an hour. <clears throat> I will ex explain this example for you, and then we go to Kahoot and try to solve it um, step by step. So in this example, as you can see, we have um, <clears throat> a simple model of home <clears throat> or house. And as you can see, it's um, the house uh, roof is from concrete. They just like simple slab, concrete slab at the top of the house, as you can see. And this concrete slab has thickness 0.25 meter and uh, the length and width of the concrete slab already are given. So we have six meter width and eight meter length. So from this, we can find the area. Eight multiplied by six, we get the area of the surface. And actually uh, what happened here, the house, inside the house, the temperature is 15. Outside the house, the temperature, as you can see, is four. So it's winter time, okay? So the heat transfer, can you tell me which way we're gonna have the heat transfer from inside to outside or from outside to inside? <clears throat> outside to inside. From inside to outside. Sorry? Inside from to outside. outside. Okay, outside. Yeah, inside to outside because from higher temperature to lower temperature. So inside the house we have 15, outside we have four. So this is the direction of heat going outside the house. Um, okay, we, we um, also given, uh, given the conductivity of the concrete. So as you can see here, K, because we need this, we said, we said before, we need K. Either we go to tables or can be given in the, the example. So here, they already give, um, uh, we already um, have the, K value, so K 0.8 watt per meter Celsius. G temperature difference is given. Now, to keep this house, to keep this house at 15 temperature, because we always we lose heat. If there is no, no heater inside the house, what will happen? Equalize eventually. Perfect. So let's say this is the house at 15. Celsius, and outside the house is um, four Celsius. And we said always heat from out inside to outside. And if this heat um, stays, heat transfer stays for say period of time, we can reach the same temperature of outside because we lose all the heat from the house. So to keep the house at 15, we're gonna put a heater inside the house. This heater will give us always heat Q to maintain our temperature at 15. Okay. So if we know how much we heat, we lose from the house, Q loss, we call this Q loss. If you know how much we heat, heat we, we lose from a house, we can find how much heat we can add by electric heater, for example. We call QE here. Because if I want to maintain 15 Celsius, I have to always 
uh, make up the loss. Okay, I have to cover the loss I had from the uh, from the roof. Correct. So this uh, make up uh, heat or um, the heat, which is the heat loss, will be uh, recovered by electric heater QE. Okay. So now if I can find Q loss, which is the heat transfer, I can I can get QE, which is electrical heater, electric heater, um, the amount of heat coming from electric heater. All right. If I know how much heat I will consume from electric heater, I can find how much money, how much dollar I have to spend to keep this house hot or keep this house at 15 Celsius for 10 hours. Okay. So that's what actually need by this question. So let's go now to let's go now to um, to Kahoot and try to um, find the requirements step by step. Okay, I'll be with you and give you some hints, and then you need to um, um, give us the uh, the uh, solution. Right. So let's go to um, Kahoot again. Um, And I will take, as as usual, we take attendance during this uh, process. Is the quiz on a tutorial time? Yes, tutorial time. Okay. Yeah. Next week. Yeah, and that's on the which ones? Are you going to mention in the announcements? I, I'm going to send the yeah, announcement and you know, but as I said, um, I'm going to cover the uh, steam tables, um, first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics, including the isotropic efficiency. All right. Everyone in? <clears throat> okay, let me take this and then go to... Okay. So we have Elias. Elias not there. Idris, Muhammad, no. Bakhtiar, ah. yes. yes, yes, thank you. Um, uh, so quickly, I was here last week. Sorry, is that? Uh, Bakhtiar Ali. 
Yeah, okay. it's the same as me. Yeah. So me fun. too. Yeah, uh, maybe this one is a uh, picture, right? You were there, but I, I refer to the um... the Kahoot. I was here in Kahoot as well. Really? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, me as well, uh, Doctor. The so Bakhtiar, yes, I remember both of you, right? I don't know what's happened. Okay. I know what because sometimes, um, yeah, Doctor Ahmed get confused with the tutorial. You click on tutorial, click on lecture rather than tutorial. Sometimes maybe they change this. Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll do this now. So Bakhtiar is there. And Abdul Aziz is there. Yes, sir, I was there. And uh, <clears throat> yes, sir, I was here yesterday. Sir. I mean, not yesterday, last week. Faisal is there. Yes, sir. And, no, sir, uh, for last week, I was there. For the last week, too, sir. Um, it's Mark absent. Faisal is there? I will, anyway, I will go to back. Yeah, anyway, yes, sir. I'll, yeah, I'll go back to uh, Kahoot. Just start. Okay, and uh, Bender. Bender, I don't know why he's there, but he's not there. He did never, never come. Yeah, something wrong with the. Okay, I'll check anyway. Jing Xu is there, right? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, Jing Xu there. William's there, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Mervin is there. Yes, sir, and last week as well, I was there last week. <laughs> Oh uh, God, this is, I uh, think I'll, I'll check with Ahmed because probably he did this. Um, okay, uh, Imran, yep. yes? Yep. Imran? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Asif? Asif, not there. <clears throat> um, Sorry, no, I'm run is there. I put different. Tarek is there, right? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, good, thank you. Asif, not there. Neo? Yes, I'm here, sir. Thank you. And Christopher is there. And Peter. Peter? No? Okay. Thank you. Sorry for this um, confusion. I'll check anyway with um, Ahmed. Right. Okay, so let's start then. Um, we know our question now. Question one. The type of heat transfer through the roof, concrete slab. So through the concrete slab only. What's the type of heat transfer through the concrete? Is it convection, conduction, radiation, or convection and radiation? This is through the roof. Remember, I'm talking about this. This is the roof. This is the heat. Which type of this? Only in this section. Yes. So we said that heat transfer by conduction all, always <clears throat> takes place in solids. So if you have solid, <clears throat> we said through the roof, concrete slab, which means that through the um, solid part of the roof, um, then it must be by conduction. Yep. Uh, then what's conve convection again? Convection is um, due to um, existence of Fluid. So if this is the roof, okay, I have heat transfer by conduction here. This is conduction. When it comes to to the to the top of the roof, when let's say if, if we have um, we have air at outside, then there will be exchange between the air and the roof. 
by natural circulation or by wind. <clears throat> this this uh, air circulation will remove the heat from the roof and we call it conduction, uh, convection. So this is convection. Okay. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. Okay, that's the, that's the difference. <clears throat> but just remember, conduction always takes place in solid objects. Okay. If you have solid object, then there will be the only type of heat transfer is conduction. <clears throat> okay, so next question. What's the heat transfer area of the roof? So I need the area of heat transfer, which is this one. It's quite simple. <clears throat> yeah, so the area of the roof, which is the, the just simply the four, uh, sorry, six times eight, this is the area of the roof. <clears throat> because heat coming from this side. So the normal, the normal, normal area to heat transfer flow. Okay, this is the normal, normal area to the heat transfer. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay, we still have back to the lead. <clears throat> the equation of heat transfer by conduction. So you know should have K. <clears throat> Which one of these? Let's be careful. Yes, perfect. So <clears throat> we said that if we have heat transfer, for example, through this um, roof, can be by conduction. So this is the area here. This is the area of the roof. And this is the delta X, which is the thickness of the roof. And there's a temperature here, we said T1. And there's other temperature at the top. We call it T2. Okay. This is the factors actually affecting the heat transfer. The only other factor is here. We don't have it is um, the, um, the K thermal conductivity. So we said Q is equal to K, which is thermal conductivity of the concrete already given in the example, multiply by <coughs> the area of heat transfer, multiply by T2 or um, yeah, T1 minus T2 because T1 is higher. divided by uh, delta X, which is the um, thickness of the roof. So this is the equation actually, which is the first one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, how do we understand the T1 and T2? T1 is T2. If, look, if you say T2 minus T1, what do you get? You're gonna get minus sign, correct? Negative. Yes, sir. If it's negative, that's fine because we are losing heat. Remember before we said when we lose heat from the system, we always get negative sign. Yeah? Yep. So if you say final minus initial, you will get negative, which is also correct because this is the sign of heat loss from the system. Okay? 
So if you have positive, means that you are having heat to the system, not out of the system. Yeah? Clear? Yes, yes, sir. Yep. yep. Okay. Let's let's uh, move on. Next. If uh, we are already given the K, what's the rate of heat transfer from this figure? You know K. Apply the equation that we just mentioned now and find out what's the um, Q. Remember Q. So the answer is, um, yeah, 1.69. So you just substitute the values, you'll find this. Um, this is in kilowatt. And remember we said, this is a Q dot. And if it's Q dot, then it's kilojoule. This is the, the units of Q dot is kilojoule per second or kilowatt. Okay. Okay. Question? Right. <clears throat> okay. The amount of heat flux by conduction. So you need to divide Q dot by the area. You said the heat flux is Q by area. Okay, good. All right. Okay, thanks everyone for your contribution. Even if you did wrong, don't don't worry. I'm not here. I'm not testing you. I'm just try to um, uh, we try to make you practice this. Um, the what we had you did to practice. Uh, you the... see for question four, what did KW stand for? Is that kilowatt or KW? Yeah, kilowatt. All right. Yeah. Okay, good. So the results, yeah. Melvin number three, to William. Thank you, correct, good. Thank you, well done. Okay. So we go back to um, the slides. So this is the solution. You can find it there. 
uh, in the, in the slides, so please try to go through it. And um, the only thing that we didn't cover here in the Kahoot, uh, we didn't find out how much money we need to pay to keep this house at temperature 15. So we said that this amount of heat lost, we call it say, this one is Q loss. Q loss from the house. This must equal to Q by the electric heater. Because we need this amount of heat always coming from electric heater to uh, keep the house at 15 Celsius, right? So if I know how this amount of kilowatt uh, and I know how many hours I need to run it. So here said I need to run it for 10 hours. So I multiply 10 by uh, Q loss. This is the amount of heat I need from, uh, amount of energy I need from the heater during 10 hours, which is given here in kilowatt hour. So kilowatt multiplied by hour, be kilowatt hour. So 16.9 kilowatt hour. If I multiply it by the rate of electricity, the price of electricity, which is very cheap here, like we don't, we don't have this price anymore. But if this is the price of electricity, most likely you get it 15 cents or 20 cents, sometimes 30 cents. But this is like what given here in the example. So I multiply this rate by the kilowatt and I get how much dollar this will cost me, right? So it's very simple. Any question? How do you find this so far? Is it easier than thermodynamics or? Yeah. Easier, right? So far. So far, yeah, so far. <laughs> At least yeah. we don't have to use tables. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, but you, you're gonna use table, don't worry. You can use table here. We have, we have special tables for heat transfer. So wait <laughs> till we get these um, topics, get to these topics. Okay, but this is, as I told you, you're gonna, you'll be fine as long as you are interacting the class and um, um, focusing on the lecture, shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so let's let's continue now because uh, time is start to be limited. All right, so this is um, what we had been in, in um, about uh, heat transfer by conduction. Um, there is um, something related to the thermal conductivity. Um, what they call it here, thermal diffusivity. We will not use this definition in, in our most in our most most examples. We don't have this, uh, but just to um, for, for for your information, if you find it in the future, actually thermal diffusi diffus diffusivity um, is uh, represents how fast heat um, diffuse diffuses through a material. So like we can tell how fast we're going to lose heat. So the, the measure here or the unit in uh, meter square per second. All right. So just to um, give you an idea about this. And of course, there are tables here. This, these tables, these, uh, these different, different materials for each one of them, we have different diffusivity. And as you can see, um, silver, has um, the highest value for thermal diffusivity, which means that if I put something inside the, diff let's say if I have put water, boiling water inside a silver cup, I will lose heat more quicker than if I put it, for example, in a glass cup. Okay, so in a glass cup, as you can see, thermal diffusivity is 0.34, while in silver is 149. It's, you know, quite big, big difference. So uh, that's, yes. It says beef, is that like the actual meat or? Yeah, but don't worry about it. This is just, they give you a different type of materials. 
And if you let's say put, put beef on a, a barbecue, um, this is the the the, um, the speed of heat transfer through the beef, for example. Yeah, but of course we don't use beef for in devices, but just to give you um, um, uh, an idea about the um, uh, how fast heat diffuses from beef or through beef beef, beef uh, meat. Yeah. Okay. Now we come, we finish with conduction. Of course, we're gonna go, go back to conduction next week. We will talk in more details about conduction, but now we just give you quick information about convection. As we said before, convection requires fluid. So um, we have two types of convection. So the, the amount of energy transfer between a solid surface and adjacent fluid, liquid or gas, for example, here in this figure, we have hot egg. This hot egg is exposed to air, just normal air inside the room. So if it's natural air or, or surrounding air, then it will be natural convection. So the, the air adjacent to the, the egg will get heated and then will rise up. And then in return, the cold air coming from the top, try to replace the hot air. So we call this natural convection by the air. Other, other type of convection is force convection. So in this force convection, we have a fan exposing air or uh, uh, forcing the air to flow over the egg. So we call this force convection because we are using um, um, a two, uh, device to uh, force the air to flow over the egg. Okay, so that's just to let you know that we have force convection, natural convection. We will come back to this um, two type of heat transfer, heat transfer in the coming weeks. Okay, um, so in in uh, you remember in in convection we were following Fourier's law of heat transfer. In convection, we're gonna follow Newton's law of cooling in convection. And in Newton's law, convection, Newton's law of, conve of convection or of cooling, following this equation. So Q dot heat transfer by convection, uh, represented by H multiplied by A multiplied by delta temperature. Uh, the, the new term here is, or the new variable here, is H. And same as we, as we did in, um, in conduction, we have K, thermal conductivity of a material. Here we have H, and H here is convection heat transfer coefficient. Okay, so this is the difference. And this is actually related to fluid. So each fluid has different H and depends of course on the, um, the speed of the fluid, the temperature of the fluid, um, so many uh, factors in, in, in this um, deciding the value of H. But T, as you know, T is the same, T, S and T, W. So we have, if you have a, this plate, okay, and this is the area here, and you have a flow, over this plate. So this is um, where we have heat exchange between the surface of the plate and the air or the fluid um, over the, the plate, okay? So the H value here, it's important and depends on um, the type of fluid we have, okay? And again here, <clears throat> this table has shows um, the value of com uh, heat transfer coefficient H for dip different types of um, uh, flow. And for example, here, <clears throat> free convection of gases, for example, uh, you can expect H between two and 25 um, for let's say force liquid. Uh, you have this range 
of edge and so on. So as you can see, it depends on the type of flow and type of fluids. So, so many, so many uh, factors here. Okay. So this is an example, just to, um, again, um, straightforward example. We have um, a flow um, of, um, we have a electric wire, sorry, electric wire. The length is two meter of this wire and the um, diameter of the wire is 0.3 centimeter. Um, inside a room, the room temperature is 15 Celsius, but the, the wire itself works as a resistance. And as you can see, the wire temperature is quite hot, it's 152, okay. Um, we, have, um, we have given the amp, the current, and the voltage. And why we have given current voltage? Because we can find the amount of heat released from the wire uh, based on Ohm's um, law, uh, we can say um, the, the, the power or W, let's say, what is equal to VI, voltage multiplied by the current. So if I know the current, I know the voltage drop, I can find um, how much uh, energy released in terms of what from this uh, wire. Okay, so uh, the requirement here is uh, discrediting any heat transfer by radiation. So we're gonna ignore here radiation. We're gonna only say there will be heat by convection from this wire to the room. So heat by convection only. So um, we need to find the convection heat transfer coefficient. We need to find the H. Now H is missing. So what we're gonna do here, first of all, we're gonna find Q dot. And we said the Q dot, we can find it from V multiplied by A, by I, sorry. Voltage multiplied by current. And then we say that same thing Q dot, because this Q will be lost to the room by convection and heat transfer by convection Following Newton's law, we said it is H, the transfer coefficient multiplied by A, multiplied by temperature difference between the room and the wire, which is um, 152. Minus uh, 15 Celsius. Okay. So we'll come to this, but to just show you that um, how to find this, um, how to solve this question. This uh, question. So do it one by one. We find first the electric heater heat coming from the wire by voltage and current, which one, which was found equal to um, ninety watt, and then. Um, we need to find the area because this is quite important. We didn't find the area. The area is actually the surface area of the wire, which is the surface area, if I make it bigger, surface area of a cylinder. So this is the cylinder. I know the diameter. I know the diameter of this cylinder. So it's given, it's um, 0.3 centimeter. I know the length. This is the length of um, the cylinder. So multiply the length by the the uh, circumference of the um, of the uh, of the circle, we get this surface area. This is my surface area actually of the wire. Okay, so you can see here it's pi dl. Pi dl give you this area, heat transfer area. If I know this now, just simply um, substitute in this Newton's law and get the uh, unknown H. So we know all these values now. We know A, we know delta T, 
we can get edge. Okay, any question? A question? Right, so just go through it again, please, when you, um, uh, after the class, it will be fine. The last part here is the radiation. The radiation actually we will not um, focus too much on it. We'll get um, the, um, the general equation of radiation, because this is what we're gonna work on. Uh, and um, is the energy, the radiation is the energy emitted by matter in the form of electromagnetic waves or photons. So heat transfer by radiation can take place uh, in vacuum also. So we don't need um, um, a gas or a liquid to transfer radiation or we don't need a solid. So radiation can transfer in vacuum. And that's why we are receiving um, the heat from the sun, although the space we are, the, oh, the space is actually a vacuum. There's no air in the space or there's no fluid, but still we can get the heat by radiation. And this is coming from the <clears throat> electromagnetic waves or photons, which uh, transmits the heat uh, by radiation. Okay. Um, the general equation of heat transfer by radiation is this one. And as you can see again, we have a new, uh, a new factor here, which is sigma. And sigma, actually, we, we call it uh, Stefan Boltzmann constant. This is a constant. You use it for all cases. Any example you have in radiation, you can use the same uh, constant. This constant is 5.67 multiplied by h to power minus 8. Okay, and as you can see, it's uh, the unit is in watt per square meter per Kelvin to power four. The reason why to power four because temperature here is, here is to power four. And remember, the temperature always in Kelvin. Don't forget this. Don't use Celsius here. Always K. Okay. Otherwise, you will get wrong. Um, answer if you use Celsius. So you need to just make sure that you know that T always in Kelvin. Okay. Um, we are assuming here in this equation that we are dealing with a, with a black black body, black surface, because black surface can emit all energy from it. And um, in, in such case, um, we're gonna use what we call emissivity factor or emissivity value, epsilon. And epsilon here for black body is equal to one. So most of the surfaces that we deal with in real life, they are not 100% black. So it must be lower than one. And that's why, as you can see in the table here, the emissivity here uh, has different values, starting from uh, aluminum foil, it's very low value, um, down to the highest one, um, which is um, probably, let's say the water has 0.96 emissivity. So it depends on the type of um, the surface or the color of the surface. The darker the color, the more, uh, the higher emissivity we have. So how do we use this emissivity? Where do we use it? We can use it in the equation that we used before in Stevens Boltzmann equation. We're gonna put it in this equation here. As you can see now in this equation, we have epsilon emissivity multiplied by sigma, which is the this constant, Stephen Boltzmann constant, multiplied by A, multiplied by delta T. So this is the actually, the actual heat transfer equation by radiation between two surfaces, okay? I will not go into, into details now because I will, will go back to it um, the last, in the last week or 
in the, the at the end of the session we will we'll have a, a lecture on radiation we'll talk about this comprehensively so thank you for your patience today because i already um uh, went beyond the time but um yeah we'll we'll continue next week um our class and we'll talk more in details about heat transfer by conduction uh, any question before we leave thank you sir all right thank you sir thanks everyone thanks for your patience and contribution we'll meet you next week and please um uh check your email because i'm going to send you some details about the quiz okay have a nice week see you